Weather Warriors, welcome to this flash forecast update. And these are forecasts that are done under 10 minutes. And so we're going to focus on a winter storm, Diego, that's going to track across the southern U.S. out to the Carolinas over the next few days, particularly Sunday. I'm going to talk about the snowfall amounts, the rates, the other uh, potential hazards. And uh, we're going to you know, throw in a few forecasting techniques as well. So this is uh, December 8th edition. Let's crack right into it here. We're going to look at the upper levels real quick. This is PivotalWeather.com. Anyone can go to this site, whether you're a weather enthusiast or just the general public. Doesn't matter. This is Pivotal Weather. We're looking at the spin in the atmosphere. This is kind of the energy, the jet stream, uh, near the jet stream. These are uh, vorticity, essentially, and this is helping create lift for these storms. And uh, when you see these darker areas like this, go out ahead of these troughs that's uh, where you're going to get your lift you're going to get them out along and ahead of that area and we got plenty of that uh, going on so this is right now this is our trough right here this is causing that storm system in the southern u.s now watch this thing as it tracks out into the carolinas well first off i want to show you this thing this thing up here is kind of screwing with this what you want is you want this to be closed off and you want another height line to be closed off like that. See these black lines? These are height lines. You want them to be closed off. You get a much more powerful system and that's not happening. And part of it's this, it's kind of screwing with the, the northern branch here and northern branch is screwing with the southern branch. And what's happening is that's weakening the storm for this area. You're not going to get as much of a comma head type snowstorm blizzard for the uh, Oklahoma area. And I said that in a few videos ago, I said, or a few days ago, I said, Hey, this, uh, this area right here, very inconsistent. Don't trust it. This is the area you want to really watch out here, and that's exactly what's going on. So let's crack right into the next day here. This is uh, Sunday now, and you can see this wave really starts to kind of strengthen a little bit. Kind of tries to close off, but not quite, but it's a little bit of a nub. That's a little bit better looking. you got stronger vorticity, and that's going to create a more powerful storm system out here uh, in the Carolinas now. This thing is kind of um, interesting to watch. This is going to track out uh, Monday and Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, more like Tuesday, Wednesday. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really quite get going until it gets off the shore. So it probably won't affect the Carolinas, but it'll be a nice low pressure system in the Atlantic. So that's what the vorticity is looking like. Now let's look at the uh, precipitation here. This is the GFS model. And. You know, this is just not the best looking type of system for a, a snowstorm. Here's your low pressure system, plenty of moisture to work with. Um, you know, you got some overrunning a little bit and, you know, a little bit of ice and mix on that northern end. The 540 line here is where the average kind of column temperature in the atmosphere is freezing. And so typically along and north of that, you're going to get frozen precipitation. Now, you can still get a profile that would suggest snow south of it, but it's kind of warm. You know, it's a little bit too warm down there. There's not enough drag of cold air. Again, if that low was closed off and it was a little more powerful, you'd be dragging a little bit more colder air down into the area. Not quite happening. But plenty of uh, rain to work with, plenty of moisture. And again, there'll be some spotty areas of accumulations. This area has been pretty consistent out here. This area out in Oklahoma, Remember, I circled this the other day on the other video. I said, this area right here is very inconsistent. The model is not handling it well. Uh, I would not uh, ex you know, buy into any of the hype in this region. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, if you go back a few runs ago, this area had like a foot. And then the next run had zero inches. Then the next run had a foot, then zero inches. Yeah, I, I'm just not overly sold uh, on anything happening there other than some spotty you know, snow showers and stuff on the backside. But this is the area that there's been a lot of consistency in out here. So we're going to track this forward into the day Sunday here. And you can see it really starts to strengthen that snow. At least that cold air starts to kind of wrap down. Whoops, we'll go back. You get a little bit of uh, cold air there. Here's your low pressure system. Uh, your cold front's kind of down there. You know, where you get these gradients here height line gradients on the southern end you're going to find your cold front and then your warm front you know maybe out here actually and then an occlusion front up north of there and uh, so anyway you get lots of snow here just on the northern end of these low pressure systems and your heaviest snow is going to be usually right north of the low pressure but there's rain there so it's going to be kind of on the southern end here and uh, that's an area you want to watch for heavy snow bands 
out in the uh, plateaus and higher ele elevations in the Carolinas here. And then you got some ice out there, probably not a huge deal. The ice storm threat has lowered a little bit, but nonetheless, there could be some ice. We'll track the, you know, track this forward through Sunday, Sunday evening. And again, kind of a mix out there. So higher elevations, you know, not terribly much higher, but overall, the higher elevations could make a huge difference here. And you could get a lot of snow out there on the west half of North Carolina. And this is actually the GFS, and it's actually kind of gone south. And we'll look at that in a second here. We'll go up to the model trends, and we'll go out to uh, 42 here, and you'll see how much this has gone south. Model trend loop. This was a few runs ago, and so we're going to look at the GFS and see how consistent it is. So this is a few runs ago. It's kind of weakened, and it's also just kind of dug a little bit farther south. It's kind of hopping around, kind of going up, but overall the trend, it's kind of like a stock market with these things. The trend's been overall a little bit farther south with this model, and the European model has done this as well. So that actually might put uh, southern North Carolina and northern South Carolina under the gun as well now, uh, and a little bit less of a threat for Virginia. So we'll look at the Canadian model. It's always important to look at different models. And the Canadian model, similar story for the southern U.S. Um, the Canadian model is typically, it seems like it's a little bit cooler and it overdoes things, over amplifies things. So, you know, and I've noticed this, uh, you know, even just the past few days it's done this. So I, I you know, I think I would take a little bit less off of uh, what this has but yeah this has a very powerful mixture of sleet and snow for the carolinas and even parts of uh south carolina there yep and tennessee i think this is a little bit overdone with the cold air and the precipitation look at the nam now and we're going to zoom in to the carolinas here we'll go out to sunday this is going to be sunday morning early sunday morning before sunrise you get that mixture that changed over to snow early sunday morning Here's your sleet right here in the pink or purplish, and then the reddish is your freezing rain. So there's going to be kind of a, a, a blob of mixture of uh, frozen precipitation along the state line there. And again, this has been trending south um, overall. So that will be uh, interesting to watch. And you got the, your heavy snow up here as well. All right, and then so this tracks out into the Carolinas, North Carolina, starts to move north a little bit and begins to weaken. This whole storm weakens, so the cold air that gets dragged down just kind of starts to, just doesn't quite get into it as much. When the storm's really strong, there's some dynamic cooling processes that occur in the storm, and that can really enhance snow totals, as you see here. But as it weakens, it starts to lose that, so you're not going to quite make it out east into the eastern parts of the Carolinas. Models have been very consistent about this area really not seeing the main action. I think your main action is going to be um, mostly in this area right here-ish. You know, there's been a lot of consistency right there. So that uh, weakens and moves out uh, around Monday. So look at the uh, vertical velocity. This will show you your heavy snow bands. And we'll uh, kind of fast forward this onto the day on Sunday afternoon. And your heaviest snow band is probably going to be kind of in this area right here is that your best source of lift kind of tracks through this area right there. So uh, maybe some heavy snow, some very heavy snow for some periods of time there. So how much snow are we looking at? Well, let's look at the total snowfall here. Well, and then we'll zoom out and look at the national one. And the NAM is putting out, North American model is putting out almost two feet out here. You got a good uh, swath of uh four to eight inches out in this region with this area right here that heavy snow band i was talking about potentially over a foot i mean the models have actually been pretty consistent with over 12 inches but if you look at the gfs it's actually a little bit less i believe so look at that real quick and uh yeah it's a little bit less it's actually been weakening so that's something we're gonna have to watch we're gonna have to watch this weakening and southward trend i think both of them are kind of occurring at the same time and that could actually limit snowfall totals. But the GFS still has a good area of 4 to 8 inches there, and then 12 to maybe 15 inches in on there. But one thing's for sure, the, the, the best area has continuously, over the past few days, lined up kind of right here. So that would be my best area for areas to see 
you know, 10 plus inches, 12 plus inches. I'm not quite buying the, the two feet thing yet. I think it's a little bit far out, a little bit uh, too inconsistent to say for sure on that. I think the storm system, I've seen better storm systems, but again, there's going to be some good lift that moves through that area that uh, brings potentially over 10 inches, 12 inches of snow. All right, so we'll look at the uh, national, and then we'll see if anything's going to happen for Oklahoma, and I don't think much is. We'll see what the NAM or the GFS has. And yeah, really just not much. And like I said, whoops, I'll go back. Like I said, that area is very inconsistent. But your best shot's going to be out here, kind of in the, just south of the Panhandle in Texas. But uh, really this area, I'm not quite buying that yet. It, you know, it's very finicky. There's going to be some light bands that set up there that might uh, bring, you know, a couple inches or so. But nothing crazy and it's it's going to kind of move around there a little bit but again this area very consistent and we'll look at the nam real quick i don't think there's gonna be much of a difference there track that out through the day monday and yeah even less and it's actually further south in texas if you look at that the nam's a little bit further north out here i think you could see that drop south just a little bit you know the european computer model and the uh, GFS has brought that a little bit farther south. And the NAM seems like it's been following models as late, you know. And uh, the NAM kind of doesn't do as well past, you know, a day or two. So anyway, I think that's going to move just a little bit further south. But overall, I think that area is pretty good. I think, you're, you know, northern Car the western end of North Carolina is going to be the prime zone for this thing. And again, some spotty areas of accumulations out here. It's probably a forecasting nightmare for this area as the models have done so poorly uh, for that region. So that's what it's looking like today. Um, again, that was your winter storm San Diego forecast. If you like videos like this, go ahead and click the uh, the old subscribe button. Uh, we'll put, put that up here. Click subscribe or go below this video or find it here or whatever. We release these videos uh, throughout the week. Usually you know, once or twice a week we'll have a, a state of the weather address where we look into the long range. We'll have these videos occasionally for storm events. And again, if you haven't seen my winter forecast video, check that out up here. And uh, or check it out up on the corner here. I've made a winter storm forecast. And I actually said that the East Coast, particularly the Carolinas and uh, you know parts of the East Coast, will see a lot of snow this year. And so far, that is potentially going to verify here. So you can check that snow forecast out. Hope you enjoy today's video, and I'll see you soon.